Dave Scott Hub Media back with Barb and uh, from Dover Apothecary. You've got lots of stuff out for me. Every time I, I come do. here, you've got the food out. You're ready I to do. play. I do. I like food a uh, lot. Me too. <laughs> I like to learn about food. But we're going to talk about the breakdowns today, right? Is that yeah. what we're going to sort of discuss and yeah. figure out what, what we should be eating and how to sort of monitor what we do and don't eat? Mm -hmm. You got the plates, you got the eggs, you got the veggies. We do. We're ready. We got the steel cut. We're, we're good to go. So. We have the steel cut. So I'm we're getting out of the way. You make cut breakfast. to the chase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So lately, Mike and I have been doing a, an exceptional amount of counseling on people with blood sugar issues. Okay. So not necessarily type two diabetic yet, but in what we call metabolic syndrome. Okay. And so metabolic syndrome is essentially when your body becomes less sensitive to the insulin that we produce because we're overproducing it because of our diets. Okay, that So makes that's sense. kind of why we've got these foods out today is I think it's really, really critically important that people understand how food changes from the form that we consume it in into macronutrients in the body. Okay. All right. So these on this side are your starches. Yep. Starches turn to sugar. So anything that grows below the ground typically, so all of your root vegetables turn to sugar in the body eventually. And so when it comes to how we're arranging our plate to eat, we need to be really sure that that particular food group is only a quarter of our plate. And most of us eat a lot of starch through the course of the day, not realizing that as a fuel source for the body, it doesn't allow you to burn fat. That okay. all you're doing is storing or it's using the carbohydrates. Up. It, carbs. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they are. Uh, so, you know, we have carrots, um, potatoes, sweet potatoes. We have our steel cut oats, and then we have our large flake oats. Uh, you'll see some brown rice there. That's actually enough for two people once it's cooked. Oh, wow. So when you think, you know, you're having a healthy stir fry, typically you've got, whether you're using pasta or rice, usually three to four servings of that carbohydrate on your plate. And we think we're doing ourselves a favor. Right. So it's, it's all about that balance. Is brown rice less than white rice? Just curious. It has less of an impact on your sugar levels okay. because the fiber level is higher. Right. So the closer something is, so that's where we get, the you know, with the steel cut, cut yeah. is it takes longer to digest, thereby your blood sugar level doesn't go up as quickly, which isn't stimulating as much insulin production. And that's what we want. We want, you know, to avoid this sort of thing happening with our blood sugar okay. levels all day. Yeah. So. And then there's serving, right? So this is a little red potato here, and yep. you can see that fits in the palm of my hand yep. quite satisfactorily. Mine's a little bit bigger. Yours is a bigger hand. potato, and you're a bigger person, and your hands are bigger. So hands, again, we've talked about serving yeah, sizes sure. a little bit before, but you can see the difference. So if we switch potatoes, and you can see that that is totally more than you fits in my hand. Need, yeah. That's more than my body needs. That would actually be two servings of that particular carbohydrate. Okay. But if you look at, you know, if you go out for a baked potato, for instance, yeah. and it's usually twice great the big, size yeah. of this, we love those great big russet potatoes. But that's just, that's just, uh, like you said, that's all that carb just coming at you then. It is, it completely, and, and when we understand that that converts over to a sugar. So when we design a plate, to have a meal. And that's a really interesting thing to talk about over the years is the size of our plates. Okay. Because when my grandparents were first around, this was a normal size right. of a plate. Yeah, yeah. All right. And you can see that if I put both of my hands under it, yeah. so if you break down a plate into half vegetables, a quarter of a protein and a quarter of a starch, right. I'm getting my food groups there. Okay. If I'm doing that three times a day, so if I've got two servings of vegetables and my starch and my protein, and I'm doing that three meals a day, and I'm choosing foods that are as close to their natural state as possible, I'm getting the macronutrients my body needs to fuel itself. 
all okay. right? Yeah. So, you know, the vitamins, the minerals, um, you know, the protein for, for our muscles, and, you know, we can't forget our healthy fats as well yes. because they slow yeah. down the absorption of these foods, and they also help us absorb more nutrients from these types of foods. So if we're designing a plate... So what's a couple examples of healthy fats? Healthy fats, olive oil, so Mediterranean diet, um, you know, and they liberally coat their foods with olive oil. So you're looking at a minimum of three tablespoons a day of healthy fats, and that actually will bring our cholesterol down typically yeah. and balance our blood sugar levels. So is it the light olive oil? Do you just go regular? Like, I'm just curious on this. I'm pref I prefer the extra virgin organic, okay. Okay, okay, because we don't want all those other excipients in our food if okay, we can avoid sense. them. So you'll also see some goldfish crackers here and they would qualify as an ultra processed food. Yes. So they yeah. are so far removed, even though it's got natural colors and you know those sorts of things. Junk food is still junk food. No matter how you, how you package it, it yeah. how you dress it up, it's still junk food. It just has less garbage in it, perhaps. And uh, so by the time a food gets to that point, then you might as well just eat sugar. <laughs> because that's what it converts over Ooh. to. I didn't have any white sugar in the house because we don't use it. But um, I do use, if I do baking for the grandkids and that, I do use some brown sugar and uh, demerara. But um, yeah, so you can see the sort of yeah. the continuum here. Yep. And then that's where our portion sizes, if we can start to adjust those, we'll find that we automatically start to lose weight as opposed to storing fat because those foods, because they turn to sugar, and I'm dropping the pepper, um, when they turn to sugar, that contributes to unhealthy cholesterol levels, and th those foods also can create a lot of inflammatory response in the body. So any of our chronic diseases, whether it's arthritis, cancer, diabetes, these things are very, very prevalent, and they haven't gone away just because of COVID, okay? Yeah. And people are gaining a lot of weight because their lives have been very altered and because they're stressed. When you're stressed, your cortisol level go goes up, and that increases your blood sugar levels as well. So, you know, there's sort of a whole continuum. But to design a plate, so if you're having two servings of vegetables... And my stomach's growling. Yeah, that's so stupid, yeah. <laughs> it is. Yummy. So we've got two servings of vegetables, which is pretty accurate. There's a couple of cups worth there. And then we do the portion of rice, which right. again, that's, that's more much. like yeah. two to four servings there. And then we have our protein. So you can see how the plate is broken down. Yeah. And I didn't have any meat, but I did have eggs in the house. So depending on your size and your activity level and things like that, one or two eggs might be the right serving for you. But you can see how that plate looks yeah. nice and full, right? You'd look at that plate and think, that's a lot of food. But because we've shifted to larger yes. plate sizes, yes. which basically holds enough food for two people, and if we were to transfer these things over onto this plate, visually you're going to feel less satisfied yeah. because there's still room on that plate yeah. Yeah. you know a lot of gaps there and and you might feel like you're not getting enough food if it's arranged that way so if somebody is having trouble managing their weight i recommend that they switch to yeah. the smaller weight or smaller sorry plate. the smaller plate and the smaller weight yeah. but and this particular food group, your starches, the things that turn to sugar, are the ones that we really need to be most mindful. You don't have to be as concerned about your protein. Okay. You definitely don't need no. to be concerned about any vegetable that isn't growing underground, typically. All right. We are not going to gain weight from those things, right. but we are going to gain a lot of nutrition from those foods and uh, your vitamins, your um, minerals, your phytonutrients, things like that. So it's not that there's no place for those foods. We just really need to be mindful of that portion in particular. Don't um, seek out low-fat foods on the market because they 
ramp up the sugar by 30 to 40 percent in Makes a low sense. fat food choice. And so people get really confused, but I'm cutting back here, I'm cutting back there, and it's just keeping that nutrition basic, right? So what about the piece of watermelon at the end of the meal? Are you getting back into that sugar dilemma again with the fruits? Uh, so again, I guess it's a oh natural, boy, though, that's isn't it? a whole other yeah, talk, well, right? That's another because show, there's folks. <laughs> glycemic index yeah. and yeah. glycemic load. So even though watermelon has a high glycemic index on the body, it actually has a low glycemic load. Oh, I see. But okay. after a meal is not a good time for fruit. See, there you go. Anybody that has trouble digesting and they're choosing fruit for their dessert is going to end up with a cauldron of gas. Okay, because those foods are naturally high in sugar, mostly fructose, and they sit and they ferment on top of the food groups that take a longer time to digest. So if they wonder why they're belching or they go to bed and they've got acid reflux or heartburn, it's probably because of that fruit after the meal. So we want to have that maybe 20 minutes to half an hour before a meal or a good two hours after that meal. So I hope our cameraman Chris takes that good advice. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope, but let's he doesn't have so. to worry about his weight, so that's a good thing. <laughs> so th what a interesting topic today because you're, you're breaking it all down for folks so they can mm -hmm. visually see really what they need to do. Yeah. And that will help them just with their, their glycemic levels and mm -hmm. eating properly. I don't want to use yeah. the word dieting, but with weight yeah. loss, you want to, yeah. you know, if that's your goal, then yeah, you just got to eat right. better. Yeah, you know? it's, it's about our lifestyle. There is not a single diet out there. Yeah. that works yeah and people will gain back an extra you know three to five pounds every time they do a diet and so and, and the other part is you know you'll regulate this meal perfectly and i'm the type of guy that would just have the piece of pie afterwards right mm -hmm. and so you've just thrown right. it all away right you just kind of you got to have that balance and that structure when you're doing it properly. if you're doing that every day huge problem yeah. right that's and and because we are very extraordinarily blessed in North America. Yeah. We have abundance and you know the foods on the market, they've designed them and engineered them, literally engineered those yeah. foods to, to, to you. make you hungrier so that we eat more yeah. because of the additives and things like that. So if you have that piece of pie after every meal yeah. or every day, and you're not exerting enough energy to it use just, the fuel that you're taking yeah. in, so it's understanding well, it's, it's, what your fuel is, what it does for you, and understanding that we, when you take that into your body, it's not just empty calories. It's not just to get you through to the next meal. It's actually doing repair processes. It's, it's hugely important that what that food source is, is doing something for you. You get to the point, too, I think where a lot of people do this, is where it's the reward for doing yeah. well. And no, it's a process. You can't just reward right. yourself every time yep. you have one good meal. You've got to sort of keep keep on that path. Yep. And then you're going to feel good overall, which I think is our goal. And you're in Mike's goal, Dover Path yep. Care. Yeah, long term, we yep. have to understand what our goals are, how we want to feel. Yep. And, uh, you know, my grandmother was, if you looked up Lady in the Dictionary, you'd, it would have been her picture with it. <laughs> but the one thing she said that cracked us all up is she says, when I'm in my 90s, I want to be able to wipe my own butt and look after myself. And it was like, whoa, Grandma, you just said that. But it's so true. Yeah. What do you want for your future? Yeah. And, you know, if all you do is ultra you know, processed foods. I mean, I understand people are in a hurry. Right, but right? I mean, you've got to take time, and that's you one thing that you have to learn early on. Get much more simple than the perfection of an apple. Yeah, there you go. And that's actually two servings, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That would be two servings of fruit that size. It would be the right size for you. But that apple has every single vitamin and mineral in need. tiny proportions, but everything is actually contained within that. And I'm a huge fan of fueling your body first and then leaving room for those little treats if you absolutely feel yeah. that you need them. Oh, for sure. But we don't tend to crave them <laughs> when our blood sugar is not going yeah, up and down yeah. like this. So if it grows underground, it's a starch. It turns to sugar. That's how your body will understand it. These types of foods, we've got different types of fibers loaded with nutrients, a high water content with those, and then our, our proteins. So we need that balance and we need those healthy fats. So we've got a great little avocado here. 
and that's a great form of healthy fat. Yes, it has a lot of calories, but those calories, those fats actually make us crave less sugar. Oh, so that's why it's important go. to yeah. choose the right fats. So, you know, hopefully everybody will examine the plates they've got in their cupboards and say, hey, let's try that for a few weeks. Let's go with the plate size I should be using and see how you feel. And if you're still hungry after you've had that, it's not like still being hungry after you've heaped up that plate right. and understand serving. So, you know, most people have a measuring cup in the house. This is a half cup serving. That's actually all the starch you, you should have. Mm. So if you imagine yeah. trying to put a bagel in there or a donut in there, and then if you're doing, you know, toast or a sandwich and you look at how those carbohydrates add up, really, really quickly how we get ourselves into trouble with that particular food group because they're high calorie, low nutrition, unless we're going with the, the stuff that's super, super high fiber. Great education today with Barb from Dover Apothecary. And if they have any questions, they can stop by the store in Port Dover, see Mike, see Barb. Uh, thanks for doing this. It's a it's really, really good down to basics. And I think that's what folks need. Mm -hmm. Have a great new year. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Take care.